Two decades ago, beetles from China and Kazakhstan were released in the southwest to reduce invasive tamarisk trees. The beetles weren't supposed to come into Arizona because an endangered bird nests in these trees. But as Cronkite News reporter Rachel Charlton explains, they came to Arizona and now there's concern that prime habitat for the southwestern willow flycatcher is in jeopardy. Fighting nature with nature may seem like a good idea until nature doesn't follow the rules. In the late 1990s, a U.S. Department of Agriculture agency, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, released beetles as a biological control agent. Their target? Tamarisk trees. The goal of their program was to um, control tamarisk, reduce it, um, kill some plants. I, I don't think they anticipated that it would kill all tamarisk, but that it would reduce its abundance. Tamarisk leaf-eating beetles strip the non-native tree, also known as salt cedar, of its canopy and kill it. Enter the southwestern willow flycatcher, an endangered songbird that nests in tamarisk trees. The program wasn't supposed to release beetles within 200 miles of tamarisk where flycatchers nest. But beetles don't follow the rules. In retrospect, it seems pretty clear there wasn't really any type of, of geographical boundary that would have kept them where they were at. Beatty is a biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service in Arizona, and he leads the flycatcher recovery efforts. From the Virgin River in southern Utah into the Grand Canyon and other tributaries, the beetles spread into Arizona, according to Beatty. It's happened faster than anybody would have expected um, because we didn't expect them to be here but it's happened slowly. The biological control program was terminated in 2010. APHIS declined to comment for this story, but they did provide documents that state that the greater than anticipated natural and intentional human assisted movement of the beetle caused it to spread into flycatcher habitat. The primary nesting habitat for the southwestern willow flycatcher is in willow trees in riparian areas like this one here. However, researchers have also found that flycatchers use salt cedar in at least half of their existing territories. Robin Silver is the co-founder of the Center for Biological Diversity. He says flycatchers depend on foliage to protect the nestlings from the scorching Arizona sun. And so to denude or to kill that tamarisk right now is really putting too much pressure on the flycatcher for them to be able to survive long term. And these birds are faithful to their nesting areas. And with an animal that doesn't move from one area to the next to breed, it's very precarious. The Center for Biological Diversity successfully sued APHIS in 2013. The ruling found that APHIS did not comply with the Endangered Species Act in the conservation of protected species. And as for the future of the flycatcher. I think we're going to have greater booms and busts. The status of the population will decline as the beetle expands throughout its range. In Cottonwood, Rachel Charlton, Cronkite News.